In the world of watchmaking, one of the most influential associations between brand and category is with IWC, boasting an incredible history of producing capable watches for pilots and aviation professionals. And in this video, we'll look at one of their most important releases in the aviation theme in recent years with the Mark 20. Let's jump in. So the theme for this video is pilot watches, but if you want even more pilot watches, to be precise, 35 additional pilot watches, some of the best in the industry in 2023, I recommend checking out our article in the description down below. We go through some of the top picks, including 2023 models. Uh, we're looking at GMTs, Fliegers, World Timers, Chronographs, Flybacks, and a lot more. Check it out in the description down below and some of our other written content on the site. As alluded to in the intro, IWC is an all-time major player when it comes to pilot's watches, with aviation heritage stretching back all the way to the 1930s when IWC unveiled the reference 436. It not only established a design DNA that would become representative for the brand, but for the pilot watch genre at large. In 1940, the introduction of the BUR watches, a watch design for pilots during World War II, came to the forefront, cementing a design format known generally today as the Flieger, with the tradition being upheld in the modern era by the hulking 46 millimeter big pilot watches and the smaller sibling, the big pilot 43 that we checked out last year. And while both are truly excellent watches with aviation legitimacy, those looking for a more accommodating wearing experience typically pays closer attention to IWC's other flying icon, the Mark series. The story goes that in 1948, the British Ministry of Defense produced a military specification calling for a new watch intended for the Royal Air Force's navigators. IWC, which already had a relationship producing watches for the MOD and RAF in particular, answered this in emphatic fashion with the original Mark 11. Designed as a highly accurate and anti-magnetic instrument, the Mark 11 was issued to RAF navigators and pilots from the late 1940s well into the 1980s, leading to one of the most impressive runs of any design in a hard-use military context. The original Mark 11 watches, some of which were later sold through military supply channels, developed a passionate following among collectors, demonstrating the persevering quality of the core design. Climbing into more recent memory, the member of this model's lineage that ruled the roost for over a half decade was the Mark 18, a versatile 40 millimeter watch released back in 2016. And despite its passionate following and proponents, there were some common points of criticism, specifically the 60 meters of water resistance and the more run of the mill movement in comparison to its price point. Yet in stealthy fashion, IWC decided to create a new successor, skipping the number 19 in the process by releasing the Mark 20 in 2020. Although the release was rather uneventful by modern luxury watch standards in terms of marketing, just kind of being dropped out of nowhere, as the dust settled though, fans began to recognize that IWC addressed many of the previous pain points of its forerunner. So in this video, let's talk about this new model, look at some of the considerations, and ultimately where does it sit in the current pilot watch landscape. The initial impression of the Mark 20 is familiar to those that have come across other models in the Mark series, but as you start to descend into the details, the points of differentiation begin to make themselves more apparent. Now, looking at the case measurements, the Mark 20 has a diameter of 40 millimeters, a slim 10.9 millimeters in thickness, and a lug to lug of 49 millimeters. Though this watch wears long for a 40 millimeter case, it's much more accommodating than the previous Mark 18, which had a lug to lug of 51 millimeters. A length for contacts is actually closer to that of the Big Pilot 43 than it is to this Mark 20. Further, the crown of the Mark 20 has been revamped, being larger at approximately six millimeters in diameter. The crown is of the screw down variety and helps with serving another substantial enhancement in helping this watch sustain 100 meters of water resistance. Case finish is predominantly brushed finish on the lug tops and case sides with hits of polishing coming into play on the bezel, case back, and the bevel casting along the sloping lugs. Between those lugs is a distance of 20 millimeters, which in this instance houses a bolstered leather strap made in Austria with matching colors stitching in an otherwise traditional aviation style. The pin buckle hardware is finished exceptionally well with an engraved IWC logo being topped off with a mix of brushing and polishing to establish uniformity with the aforementioned center case. Now, given the versatility that comes with these pieces, it is good to see IWC's quick release system available on the factory straps, which when pressing the small tab on their backs enables the wearer to easily remove them, leaving the spring bar in place in case you wanted to easily enlist the use of a NATO. 
I have on my wrist right now. As an important note, the Mark 20s are now available with a bracelet. However, I can really only speak to the straps as this is where I've spent the majority of my time wearing these. Looking through the properly treated AR coated sapphire crystal, we have one of the most legible dials in all of watchmaking by way of its large Arabic numerals, its orientation triangle at 12, thick outboard minute track, and luminescent filled minute in our hands. The date window is the biggest change from the dial apart from some slimming of the numerals and the obvious Mark 20 at six o'clock. The date window has an additional stepping to its framing, which helps integrate more cleanly with the dial backdrop of both of these black and blue variations. However, the only new design consideration made that I personally am not as big of a fan of is the non-matching date wheel with the dial, which I prefer from the Mark 18. The loom on the piece is contained at each of the quarter hours, the tri triangle at 12 and the hands as mentioned, offering not exceptional, but solid legibility in darker environments. Saving the biggest area of change for last, let's discuss the caliber 32111 inside hidden from view behind the engraved closed case back. Now the movement is composed of 164 individual parts and is capable of an impressive 120 hours of power reserve or five days while beating away at 28,800 vibrations per hour or four Hertz, which is in select company only being rivaled by other Richemont group brands and the Oris caliber 400 when it comes to matching that reserve. To reduce wear and tear and improve resistance to magnetic fields. Certain components, including the escape bit wheel and pallet fork are produced from silicon and the iron cage remains adding further protection in the magnetic fight. This caliber is also finished with circular Cote de Genève finish across the upper bridges and rotor and perlage on the base plate. Despite this movement being exceptional in terms of its specifications across the board, it has fallen victim to the semantics surrounding the in-house argument. The short of this is that the movement is going to be based off of Val Florier uh, movement, uh, Richemont's own movement manufacturing arm. This conversation of in-house or not has become exhausting, so I'm not gonna go into really further detail in discussing the topic that probably reaches no clear end cut result. And in general, this is a more than capable movement at this price range. One aspect of these calibers is that IWC doesn't make any specific claims in regards to accuracy. We tested out both of them at five different positions. The blue was testing at zero to plus five seconds a day, and the black was running at plus nine to plus 12 seconds a day. In terms of general operation here, we're looking at 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking, stopping the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and a power reserve of 120 hours. So now to unpack when looking at these Mark 20. So I've long awaited being able to test drive these for some time, wear them, and I think they've done a lot of good things with these watches and improving them over the previous Mark 18. So let's talk about some of the cons first and then we'll shift into the pros. Now first, I think one of the big things here is yes, it's a great improvement in wearability compared to the previous versions. This is gonna be much more wearable on most people's wrists, but it still is longer in terms of that length for a 40 millimeter watch. I would say it wears like a 40 and a half on wrist. Uh, if you have it in the bracelet, I can't speak to that, but I would an anticipate that that's going to wear even more, uh, maybe sizable than even having it on a NATO strap, for example, like I have here. Uh, for myself, I think it was still wearable and being able to be pulled off in a lot of environments. But for those purists that love those 36 millimeter mark cases, this might still be a little bit large and not differentiating enough from the big pilots. Also, you're dealing with a design style that despite having its history, there are many competitors now at much more affordable prices. I think of Longines, I think of Zinn, throwing some great options for enthusiasts out there that are looking for a watch of this styling. And then one final point that I'll mention is the regulation on these. These are not COSC certified movements. So you do have a little bit wider range of deviation compared to some other watches in the segment. Talking about Breitling, Tudor, Rolex, Omega, Longines, and more. But now let's shift over to some of the positives of this watch because there are a lot of great things about this watch. And I think it's a great improvement on what we saw previously with the Mark 18s. This is almost a benchmark for pilot watches in the luxury segment. The wearing experience, as I mentioned, is improved. I could absolutely pull this off. I think it looks great on my wrist. And I think it'll be way more viable for more wrists out there compared to the Mark 18. Versatility is there with the looks. You have some different dial colors to choose from. You have the bracelet options. You also have the strap changing system, which I was already indulging myself with and putting it on a NATO here, but it's very easy to swap it back on the strap. One of the best interchangeability systems that I have seen in the market. So ultimately, what is the Mark 20? It's an improvement on the Mark 18 in several different ways. It's also a benchmark in terms of what a luxury pilot watch should be from a brand that is very familiar with watches of the type and having legitimacy and history to back it up. But all right guys, that's my take on these Mark 20s. 
Have you been able to handle these watches yet? What do you think of the total package? Uh, any people that actually own these watches as well, love to see comments down below about what you're thinking about the watch on your wrist so far. That's always helpful to get ownership stories in the comments so other uh, viewers can see that. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. It does help out the channel. Definitely check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to fund all of these productions is through selling watches on our site. The brands don't pay us to make these videos. We're all self-funded here. So if you are in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.